So now we're gonna look at the FUMPT package and start looking a little bit more into how we read the standard library documentation from the different packages. We're gonna start with the FUMPT package and we're gonna see format printing and the different format printing verbs we could use. And so to do that, first I'm gonna set up a little bit of a program. So I'm gonna do var x int and then do var, let's start with farther down the chain, var, var uh, b string and, uh, and then I could do equals uh, James Bond, right? Give it some string. And then var C uh, could be a bool. And then var D bool, var, var D bool. <laughs> var D bool is equal to uh, true. And then we could come down here and we could do E colon, uh, oh, we could do, uh, yeah, we'll do E colon equals 42 and f colon equals uh, shaken, not stirred, stirred, and, uh, and then g colon equal. And for strings, we could either use double quotes or we could use uh, raw literal, uh, string raw literal. The back ticks give us the string raw literal. And so the back tick on my keyboard is up there by uh, the escape key. Where is it? Right there. Up there by the escape key. And it's the one right under the escape key. That's the little back tick right there. And so I, I hit that back tick and it allows me to do a raw string literal. So I could say now, Miss Money Penny says, and forgive me if I teach the same thing twice, just take it as review. I teach in a lot of different places and uh, I forget sometimes what I said at the university versus what I said at college versus what I said in a video I'm recording versus what I said in a video I recorded and ended up deleting. <laughs> so sometimes I say the same thing a couple of times, just take it as review. <laughs> All right, so Miss Money Pen, Penny says, hello, hello. Hello, she purrs, James. So maybe we should change that to purrs. Nah, says, whatever. And, uh, and then H, we could do colon equal uh, raw string literal and say Q says, I have some new toys for you, Mr. Bon James. All right, so I think we have enough examples there, but I just wanted to show a raw string literal. And, uh, and we're gonna see format printing. Now I'm gonna print some of this out. So I could just copy this a couple of times and uh, start printing these things out. So I've got A, B, C, D, E. And then uh, for B, I'm, I'm gonna do B again, James Bond, and then says, and, uh, and then we could drop in here, uh, B, we could drop in F. So James Bond says, shaken, not stirred, and that's E, F, and then G, Miss Money Penny says that, and H, Q says that, and we could run all this, and unexpected F, expecting comma or in, so I need a comma right there. There we go, so line 24 tells me line 24, right, uh, unexpected F, because it was like that before, and it was expecting a comma or uh, the end of that statement. So I'm gonna do a comma right there. Format it all, run it, and now it all prints out. Come on, baby. Run it again. That was just a uh, error communicating with the server. So that first one, the zero value of an int is zero. That was A. B gave us a uh, string, James Bond. C, the zero value of a bool is false. D gave us true. Uh, e gave us 42. And then James Bond says shaken, not stirred was when we combined B and F. And then G, Miss Moneypenny says, hello, James. And, uh, and then finally, uh, the last one was H, Q says, and notice it put that on a couple of lines because it's a raw string literal, raw string literal, meaning you know whatever's between here is treated as a raw string between the back ticks. Now we're gonna take a look at printing out the type. So to print out the type, I'm gonna use uh, format printing. And so if I go to godoc.org forward slash fumpt, it's gonna bring up the documentation for the fumpt package, there it is, right? Ba boom And uh, I'm gonna zoom down, and right in here, I could start looking at it. Now the first place I go when I come to documentation is index, up here in the top right, and sometimes they'll have examples 
right? Let me bring that over. Index right here in the top right, and sometimes there'll be a link for examples, which is nice. So I'm gonna click on index, and I can see that there's a whole bunch of different uh, functions which are available for me outside. All these are functions. They have func, the func keyword in front of them, and then there's a few types down here at the bottom. These are all available outside the package, so I could use them. We've been using func print line right here. There's also func print F, and then there's just func print, which print line will put a new line after you print. Print does not, so if you just want it to not return after you've printed, it doesn't give you a new line. Print F does format printing. Print F formats according to a format specifier, which I call a format verb, and writes to standard output. It returns the number of bytes written in any write error encountered. So print F. That's what we're going to use now. It takes a format of type, so it takes, this is just an identifier. That could be called anything, but it needs to be a, of type string, and then it'll take an unlimited number of values of any type. The variadic parameter here, as signified by the triple dots, and the empty interface representing any type, right? And then this is just the identifier. So that's, a, that's printf. So what are the format printing verbs if we search for just verb in this document, right? And so I did a command F on my keyboard and it brought up my browser search capability and I searched for verb. And now if I start looking through these, you know, uh, the format verbs, you know, in quotes, are uh, derived from C's but are simpler. Here are the verbs. So here are the verbs. So per percent V, sorry about the, nos <laughs> the motion sickness. The percent V is the value in the default format. If we want to know what those percent V's are, we could come down here, and this time again, I'll do a command F percent V, and search for percent V, and here's the default format for percent V, right? So it'll figure out if it's a bool, and it'll print out the, the bool, or percent D if it's a decimal, or percent G for float, or string is percent S, and you know percent P for chan or a pointer. So percent V is a, a nice format printer to use. And so we could do this, fumpt.printf, and uh, then our parens, and then pass in our arguments, and we're gonna have percent %v, and we could pass in, and we'll just pass in that first one, a. And I'm gonna get rid, comment out. Uh, before I do this, I'm just gonna save our code as it is, share, copy that, come over to our outline, and uh, put this in here as code. And uh, this first chunk of code just shows us a basic code setup. Uh, and we'll bullet point this. Using var, using short declaration operator, and uh, using zero value. And we'll put that here, using zero value. Okay. And then here's the code. Pow. And... Uh, Cool, that code was actually like before that. So I'll get a different URL before we had that and make sure it's that URL. So notice right now that code is C underscore, but now it's D, right? So it gave me different code, when I, a different URL when I changed the code. Sweet, so now we're uh, ready to do some format printing. I'm gonna get rid of all this. And I'm gonna do print F and then my parens and my first argument, which needs to be a string, and I'm gonna do percent %v, just the default, and print a. And now when I run this, format that and run it, uh, ef, gh, declared and not used. So I could comment all this out. And now run it. Zero, percent %v, zero, right? So it gave me the value. And if I wanted to do the string, I could do the same thing. And I could do B run. So it's giving me the value. And it didn't give me a new line. So if I wanted to, I could do a backslash in, which will, is an escape character, which gives me a new line. And I'll run that. And now it just printed out the values. It figured out that this is an int, and it, that would be the same as percent %d. Right, and uh, let's just see if that's right. Percent %d for percent value. For an int, it's percent %d, cool. For a float, it's percent %g, and just so you could see those. But that's what percent %v does. It figures out the value and prints that value out. I'm gonna leave that as percent %v, 
and then just share this and copy it and come over here and put that in as percent V. And uh, now uh, the other thing that was mentioned in that when we were looking at percent V was uh, something I wanted to point out. We've got percent V O, the backslash N. So if I wanted to find the escape characters, I'd go to like the Golang spec and search here. And so I could do a command F and then search here, escape. Ah, uh, here we go. Cool. After a backslash, certain single character escapes represent special values. And so we have backslash in as a line feed or new line, horizontal tab. So backslash in and backslash T are probably the two that get used the most. Those are the escape characters. And uh, they're here under rune literal. So I'll just link to that in our uh, escaped characters like backslash in or backslash T link to that right there. All right, so that's uh, doing a little bit of percent V. We could also use, and I'm gonna close these tabs to the right, we could also use, instead of percent V, we could use a Go syntax representation of the value, percent pound V. So we could experiment with that and see what that does. So I'll just add that up here, percent pound V and run. And uh, we'll also, let's see, we've got that, and we'll do a new line after this one and a new line after that one. So this has uh, the quotes around it. It's kind of interesting. And then we could also do copy V, and we could come here and we could look at percent %t is a ghost syntax representation of the type of the value. <coughs> so that's pretty cool. So I'm going to do percent %t on those. capital T, format it, run it, and we can see that that zero is an int and that the James Bond is a string. And I don't need for these examples uh, E and F and all that, so I'll just take those out just to keep it clean and no code pollution, keep the code looking nice and run it just to make sure it still runs and then get the URL and copy it. So the main thing you're learning here is you saw a little bit of using the FUMT package and looking at the index and, uh, and then going up and reading the descriptions, and you've learned that there's format printing, and to do format printing, we use printf, and we saw escape characters like backslash n, backslash t, which would be a tab, and uh, so we could do escape characters, and with format printing, you put the format printing string there, and, uh, and then you put the variable, and it gets assigned to this, is like percent %v, put the variable there and use this verb, for that variable. So here it just gave the value, here it gave the type. And you could also do this, you could have a couple of them. So I could do percent %t and then a backslash tab and then a percent %t. And I could have uh, both a and b. And a is going to map to this one and b will map to this one. And there's going to be a tab separating them. So format that and run it. And so here we have int and then a tab and, uh, and then the string. So you could do multiple things in one line and have different values, whether it's an int or a bool, you could have different values printed. You could have it printed out. And uh, that's, that's pretty cool. And I'll show you one more thing, which is nice here. If we look at the index, we have not only print and uh, print F and print line, but then we also have sprint. And so sprint is to string print. And if we go look at that sprint, returns a string. Sprint formats using default formats and returns the resulting string. So this is a really cool thing to do. So we could create a string and we could say s s s is colon equal to font dot sprint sprint and uh, we could just do sprint and then here and we could do a b and it's going to uh, print out the the value of a as a string which will be zero and the value of b uh, also as a string, but it'll all be in one. So it'll be S declared and not used. So now I actually want to print that. Print ling, print line. So here it gave me, uh, and we'll do a new line after this one right there so that it's not all jammed together. So that gave me zero James Bond, right? So it just printed that as, uh, as strings. If I wanted to add another string in there, I could.
and uh, it put that in there. So that's a, a nice thing. And we could also do uh, s s2 colon equal form dot dot sprint f, and we could do something like this. We could even do percent v right here and then uh, backslash tab, backslash tab, and then percent t, percent t, and then I'll pass in right here uh, to pass in. And so this is uh, the value I'm passing into that one. This is the value I'm passing in to that one. And then this is the value I'm passing in to that one. S2 declare to not use, common mistake of mine. I get so excited I wrote it and then I forget to use it. And so here to pass in and then we have that tab and then we have int and then we have that tab and we have string. So you could also use sprint f in that way, which is kind of cool. All right, so that's a string printing and that's printing and that's print versus print f versus print line and sprint versus sprint f versus sprint line. So hopefully you're starting to see like um, the pattern here, and uh, and that pattern in this index is uh, you know for for like print. Let me just show this. That pattern is for print, right? Print, print f, print line, and then sprint, sprint f, sprint line, and then we could do file print, which will print to some sort of a writer, and we'll learn about that later, where we could do print, print f, print line but write it to something like a response writer in a web app where, you know, hey, write this straight to that response writer and it'll send that text straight as the server's response because it's writing to a writer or you could write it straight to a file because the writer, IO writer allows, it's a, a interface which allows any value which implements that interface to be used there. And so uh, you could do it to a HTTP response writer or you could do it to like a file and so that's polymorphism in action. But the principle here is print, printf, print line, sprint, printf, sprint line, string printing, or file printing, file print, file print f with formatting or file print line to, uh, to a file. And then we have uh, some scanning, which allows you to scan input. So that's uh, pretty interesting stuff from the FUMPT package.